The episode begins moments before Henry got into the cab. Raj, a cab driver, just picked up Adam, but when he asks where to go, Adam gets out his sword and kills Raj with one precise stab. Adam then drives the cab next to the precinct and picks up Henry as he goes out. He immediately reveals himself to be Adam only by his voice and tells Henry to hold on as he drives the car very fast and recklessly. Henry can't do anything to stop Adam as he is on the back seat which has a barrier separating it from the front seat. Adam tells him that the reason he has been ignored by Henry is because he does doesn't believe he is truly immortal. He then tells him he is going to prove it to him, and then takes out a gun and shoots himself. His body disappears immediately and the cab drives into the Hudson River. Henry trapped in the car tries to get out of the car, but he is unsuccessful and he drowns. Henry resurrects on the East Side River but as he swims out, he is caught by police officers and brought to the station for indecent exposure. He is brought into Lieutenant Johanna's office and he gets off from being punished by claiming he is a sleepwalker. He then gets back to work and finds Raj who just got brought in for autopsy. He immediately recognizes his name from the ID badge on the cab and when he sees the stab wound, he figures out he was killed with a sword. Henry goes back home and tells Abe what happened. He then tells him he is going to find Adam by solving the case, but Abe tells him this is not something he should so alone as Adam is now a known killer. Abe then suggests for Henry to tell Joe of his condition as she is his closest friend and tells him he can trust her. But Henry tells him he has done once before and that it didn't end well. It then cuts to a flashback to 1815 when Henry just got sent to a mental hospital for telling his wife Nora he is immortal. Nora was the first person he trusted to tell his secret, and she betrayed his trust, making him spend a lot of time in a mental hospital where he got continuously tortured. Henry then goes back to his office and continues to work on the autopsy. He finds out Raj hasn't been a driver for a long time, and that he has also recently taken a hepatitis B vaccination, which is weird for a civilian. The team then get a call about the cab being found in the river so Henry, Joe and Mike go to the scene, and they start looking into the cab. Henry gets into the back of the car and he sees a scratch mark he left when trying to get out of the car. He then sees his pocket watch in the back of the seat. He then goes to grab it before anyone sees but Joe grabs it first and tells him to not drop his items. Mike then finds the bullet case for the gun Adam used and they figure out it in an antique gun. So later that night, Henry comes back to the river with Abe to look for the gun. They see the gun in the river and Henry takes off his cloth to jump in and retrieve it. But before he could do that, he is caught by the police again. He is again brought to Joanna's office and he explains to her what he was trying to do. Joanna is getting really confused with Henry's recent behavior so she orders him to see a therapist. Henry then goes to see a therapist named Lewis while Joe and Mike trace the gun to a man named Rich. Richard. The two then go to Richard's home and they find him dead and his body open for autopsy. Henry comes in to examine the body and he sees the body has been cut precisely with a hunting knife. Henry then runs back to his office to look for his hunting knife and he is relieved to find it there. But he then takes out the knife and finds it covered with blood. He then goes back home and tells Abe, Adam is trying to frame him for the kills. Abe then decides they need to leave immediately and they start packing their stuff. Meanwhile, Joe is looking for Henry after he left work unexpectedly. She then comes to his home and runs into Henry just as he was trying to hide the bloody knife. Joe confronts him and asks him to tell her the truth. Henry then tells Mike, Joe, and Joanna that a stalker who thinks he is immortal has been trying to frame him. Everyone stares at him for a few seconds, but they believe him as Henry was at the psychiatrist's office, and they also don't see Henry as a killer. They promise to catch the killer, and everyone gets back to work. They study both Raj's and Richard's previous work, and they figure out they both used to to work at a hospital. They then go to the hospital and find out that both Roch and Richard left after they fought with a patient. Henry and Joe then go to Lewis's office and ask him about the patient. He reveals to them the name Clark, and he tells them that Clark believed he was immortal and that he was found naked in the river four times. He also reveals to them Clark is a violent man and comes regularly to the hospital to avoid prison time. They then ask him when Clark's appointment is, and he tells them it is now. The two rush to find where Clark is, but the receptionist tells them that Clark just left. Joe then shuts down the hospital Hospital, but Henry sees Clark as he gets out just before all the doors cloth. Later Henry goes back but he doesn't find Abe. Clark then appears in front of him. He then kneels down and asks Henry to kill him with the sword. Henry refuses as he has never killed anyone before but then he hears Abe upstairs who just came from the market. Clark then goes to grab his sword which forces Herney to stop him and he stabs him with a knife and kills him. But Clark's body doesn't disappear revealing he is not actually Adam. The police come shortly after and Joe and Mike comfort Henry. Later that night, Adam calls Henry and congratulates him for doing his first kill. Henry is angry with him and goes to close the phone, but Adam tells him to look outside and reveals his face to him. He then tells him he is going to disappear for some time, but that he will look forward to continuing their adventure. Episode 12 
The episode begins a few years ago. Jason is a waiter, but one day Oliver, the CEO of an investment company, comes into his place of work, and Jason gets the courage to pitch his business idea. This works out massively, and Jason now is a high executive in the company. In the present day, he is getting celebrated for finishing a big deal, and he gets gifted a luxury car. And the next day, he is found dead. Joe, Lucas, and another primary medical examiner arrive at the scene, and we learn Henry has not been back to work for the last three weeks. The new Emmy tells them that the death is caused by accidental drowning caused by being drunk. But Lucas notices things in Jason's body that suggest otherwise, but as he is not the primary ME, he cannot rule the body a murder. We then see Henry stuck at home doing autopsy on a rat. It is very obvious he misses his job, but he has not yet gotten over him killing another man, especially because he got manipulated by Adam. Abe comforts him and tries to help him move on, but that has not been working either. But Abe gets a call from Jason's father Marcus to inform him of his sin's death. Marcus and Abe served together in the Vietnam War, and he is the big reason Abe survived the war without any major injuries. This news snaps back to Henry, and he gets back to work the next morning and rules Jason's death immediately. Joe is glad he is back, and she takes him to Jason's home. They talk to the girlfriend who told them he went for a drive in his new car and didn't come back. Henry then looks around the house and finds a secret compartment with $100,000 and a key. The two then go to the firm Jason used to work at, and they are met with the receptionist, Melanie. She takes them to his previous office where Val is already moving into. Henry looks around and sees a blood stain on the rug in the office. Melanie and Oliver inform them that an old friend of Jason, named Kevin, got into a fight with Jason a week ago. Later that night, Henry returns home, and Abe is waiting for him to tell him he got the killer. Henry reveals to him they have a suspect, then gives him the key and asks him if he can find out anything about it. The next morning, Joe and Henry visit Kevin at his mechanic shop. He reveals to them that the reason he got into a fight was because Jason didn't give him back $100,000 that Kevin gave him for investment but wanted it back because of emergency. Henry then notices pots of Jason's car in the shop, which prompts Kevin to run away but he is caught by Joe. He is then brought into custody, where he adds that the night Jason died, he got a call from him telling him to meet him at his home. Kevin then went outside his home but Jason never came. He then saw Val parking the car in Jason's home, and he was angry so he stole the car to sell it and get the money that way. Joe then immediately arrests Val, and he breaks very fast. He reveals to her that he got a call from Oliver, and when he went there, Jason was already dead in the pool. Oliver then told him to dump the body, so he did as he was told. Joe and Henry then go to Oliver's home with a search warrant. Henry examines the pool water and figures out it was the same kind of water found in Jason's body. But Oliver is suspiciously calm even as Henry confirms Jason was killed in his home. And we see why as Joe gets a call from Joanna telling her Melanie has just confessed to killing Jason. Meanwhile, Abe has been on an adventure trying to figure out what the key was for. He talks to a key expert who tells him the key is found on boats so they go to Oliver's boat posing as his employees. They then open the lock and find confidential papers. Henry comes back home with Abe and his friends going through the papers, and they reveal to him that the company has been showing investors and the government fake reports on their profits, and that the whole company is a sham. Henry is happy with the information but mad at Abe for stealing the papers because they will get thrown out, even if they arrest Oliver. He then calls Joe and tells her everything. She then goes to Melanie who was about to sign her confession and tells her that Oliver has been arrested for fraud. She then convinces her she won't see the money he paid her so she encourages her to tell her the truth. Melanie then breaks and reveals that Oliver killed Jason after he confronted him about his shady business and that he promised to give her $20 million to take the fall. Joe and Henry then go in with the FBI and arrest Oliver who was about to leave the country. Later that night, Joe visits Henry at his home. She tells him she is there for him if he wants to talk about him killing a person. Henry has not been himself since he killed Clark, but he is now a little comforted with Joe's commitment to help him through it. And the episode ends as they get a call for another crime. Episode 13 The episode opens with a masked man robbing a jewelry store, and later a man named Aaron knocks on Joe's door, but he runs away when he sees a car following him. Joe then opens her door shortly after but there is no one there. The next morning Aaron is found dead, Henry figures out Aaron was run over by a car, and later they confirm his identity. They find out Aaron was a criminal, and when they look through his files, they find out Joe's late husband was the district attorney that put Aaron in jail three years ago. This brings back strong memories and emotions as she goes through a video of her husband interrogating Aaron. Mike tries to comfort her and tells her he can go through the files, but she doesn't let him help her. Henry and Joe then talk to Aaron's wife, who tells them that Aaron has moved on from his past life and that he planned to take his son to the zoo that morning. Joe and Henry then go to the jewelry store and they run into Detective Hank from Major Crimes who was in the academy with Joe. He lets them go through the crime scene and after seeing how the glasses were broken, Henry figures out Aaron was not the person that robbed the jewelry. 
The team then go through Aaron old accomplices and come up with the name Diego who just got released from prison, so Hank, Mike, and Joe go to Diego's known hiding spot, and Diego runs away as soon as he sees them. They then follow him through an abandoned factory, and Mike gets shot on the arm, Jew then immediately runs to his aid, and Hank returns after taking out Diego. Diego's body is then brought in for autopsy, and Henry and Lucas find swallowed diamonds in Diego's body. Henry then takes the diamond to Abe to see what kind of diamonds they are, but after examining it, Tabe informs him these diamonds were worthless. This is very confusing for Henry, but everything the police need has been found, even the car Diego used to kill Aaron. Mike also privately tells Henry to drop the case, as the longer the case goes, the longer Joe has to think about her husband, which is clearly hurting her. So Herney takes Lucan on an unofficial mission, and they go back to the crime scene to find where Aaron was running from. Aaron had red paint on his hand, which they first thought was from a red car, but Henry then sees a red door. He then knocks on the door and Joe opens it, and after an awkward interaction, Henry figures out Aaron was looking for Joe's husband that night, and when they talk to his wife, she tells them that Joe's husband was the reason Aaron got a short sentence. She tells them he believed Aaron when he told him he wanted to change, so he helped him lower his sentence. Later that night, Joe and Henry go to a bar for a drink. Joe is trying to drink herself into not being hurt, but Henry tells her the only way to heal is to truly move on. The next morning, Joe wakes up on Henry's couch. Abe then gives her his signature hangover cure and talks to her about his recently stolen fake and decor shrine. He then tells her he actually rather gets the insurance money, which gives Henry an idea as he figures out Diego stole fake diamonds because the owner wanted it stolen. Joe tells Hank the information about the owner and the two go together to apprehend the owner. Henry goes back to the station and runs into Mike. He then sees the way the bullet passed and figures out that the reporting was wrong. Henry explains there is no way Diego could have shot him in that angle from when he was there, revealing that only Hank could have done it. Meanwhile, Joe and Hank are going to the owner's home and they talk about greedy people. Hank then says police officers don't get a nice home and accidentally reveals Joe's neighborhood, which he should not have any idea about. Right that second, Hank just messed up and he takes out his gun and tells Joe to drive to a specific location. But Joe already had her earphone on so she secretly calls Henry's phone and the police track her and listen to her. They figure out Hank will be able to kill her before any police gets to them so Henry tells Joe to crash her car on the barricade. Joe then fully trusts him and rams the car into the barricade 60 miles per hour which gives her minor injuries. And the police arrive shortly after and arrest Hank. Later that night, Henry visits Joe at her home and saves her from continuously watching her husband's old videos, and the episode ends as the two have a drink sitting on the stairs. Episode 14 The episode opens with Abe getting his heartbeat and blood pressure checked by a nurse. He is planning to change his insurance plans. He is in good health, but then the nurse asks him his birth parent's name. He then tells her that they died in Poland when he was an infant. The nurse then immediately notices the numbers on his arm and figures out his parents were killed by the Nazis. Abe is descended from Jewish parents, but he doesn't know their name or who they are because the record of the camp they were in was lost after the war. Henry gets a call from Joe about a murder, and they arrive at the home of the victim, Carl. Henry looks around and figures out the killer stole paintings, and he quickly realizes the paintings are original art that were stolen by the Nazis. Joe goes through Carl's file, and she learns Carl's father was a Nazi commander, and that he is the one that brought the stolen paintings. They bring his son Eric in, and reveal to him where his father got the painting. This all comes shocking to Eric as he has believed his grandfather was an art seller in Berlin, not a Nazi commander. Meanwhile, Henry has found a very valuable old watch. So him and Joe visit the shop owner, and this is when the biggest surprise came for them as the owner tells them Carl was returning all the paintings to their rightful owners. He then shows them one of the paintings that belonged to his family and informs them that he gave the watch to Carl as a thank you. The next morning, Lucas finds another blood at the crime scene which is traced to Sam. They go to his home and find him skinning a ship for an art project. They then find one of the stolen pictures. Sam tells Joe that Carl told him about his family painting, but when he stalled out on giving him, he stole the painting without being seen. He then tells them he heard Carl yelling at someone. Julian Julian works in a Swiss bank and he reveals to them Carl saves most of the paintings in the bank's vault and that they were arguing about putting some of the paintings for sale. But later, Henry figures out Julian has touched the paintings recently, but when they go to the bank, they find Julian gone with the paintings. Meanwhile, Adam comes into a bee shop with an antique tray. He tells him he was planning to sell and gives him his contact number to call him once he has figured out the price for it. Henry returns home later and Abe tells him to examine the tray. Henry cleans out the tray and finds his family crust carved on the tray. 
He immediately figures out the man was Adam, and he meets him in a park. Adam then apologizes for tricking Henry into killing, and then promises he will not touch Abe because of the thing he went through. He then reveals he was also experimented by the Nazis. And before he leaves, he asks Henry to tell him if he runs into a dagger that was stolen from him. Henry then asks why he would do anything for him, and Adam responds by saying because he will give him something invaluable in return. Joe and Mike go to the dock and find the shipment Julian was using but when they open it, they find him dead and with all the paintings there. Henry does his autopsy and figures out Julian and Carl were killed by different people. They then find a fingerprint on Carl's eyelids which matches Eric. They bring Eric into custody and he confesses he killed his father after they got into a fight after Eric learned about his family history from Julian. Eric killed Carl accidentally, he then took the paintings and gave it to Julian to sell them. Lucas has been running DNA that he found on Julian's body and reveals the killer had diseases that have not existed for 2,000 years. Henry immediately figures Adam was the killer but he can't tell the team so he tells her he has no theories about why the killer had those diseases. Meanwhile Adam returns to the store to sell the tray and when Abe goes in to get the receipt, Adam puts a record book on the table and leaves. Henry later returns with Abe reading the book. Abe then tells him he just found out who his father and mother's real name is. Henry figures out Adam left the records to Abe and tells him that. As the episode ends, we see Henry and Abe go to the Holocaust Museum and they find a picture of Abby's mother and father. Episode 15. The movie opens in her catch consulate. We see people in line applying for a visiting visa. An old man named Armin Aronov then comes in, and when asked why he is visiting, he tells them to die. The workers then see his name on his visa and she run into and from the director Dasha. Later we see Armin feeding birds on a bench, he then has a heart attack and dies on the spot. It then cuts to Henry and Abe as they are having breakfast. Abe has been finding long lost cousins and discovering his family tree. Henry then gets the call about the death. The team arrives and the team is told the death was called in as a murder by a rookie but his body suggests a heart attack induced by a cancer treatment. Henry then sees an old scar on Armin's body and tells the team he wants to examine the body more. We are then taken to a flashback in 1955 Abigail and Henry are on a train going on a vacation, but before they can have fun Henry is called in to treat the son of the king of Rakesh. That son is Armin and Henry saved his life, but since he didn't have proper equipment on the train, he left the scar on Armin's body. His wife then comes in and confirms Armin is the last king of Rakesh. Armin lived most of his life in America after his father was overthrown and his whole family killed. Later that night Henry visits Armin's wife to give her a ring he got from Armin's father for saving his son. They then talk about her husband's condition and she reveals to him Armin never received cancer treatment, revealing the radiation found in his body was from poisoning and not treatment. Henry and Joe then visit the consulate and they talk to Dasha. He first refuses to cooperate but he then meets them outside and reveals to them Armin wanted to go back to Rakesh to die. He also tells them that Armin had a big diamond with him which he offered Dasha to let him visit the country. The team then go to the restaurant Armin usually went to and the owner reveals Armin was having an argument with a young woman. They then track the women named Lydia in a club and she reveals to them that Armin came to her a month ago and told her he was a kind and that he wanted to take her or Kess to give her a dime and that his family hid. Lydia didn't believe any of it, so Henry and Joe informed her everything he told her was the truth. They then visit his wife again with the suspicion of her killing him, but she tells them that she knew he cheated 25 years ago. She then starts moving frantically and falls on the ground, and Henry immediately recognizes she has been poisoned too. Thankfully he manages to make her vomit out the toxin and save her life. Henry and Joe then examine the home and find an ink on the door. Henry figures out the ink was from the stamp and realizes the killer is someone that works in the consulate. They immediately contact Dasha and he gives them the file on a thief. Henry and Joe then drive to Lydia's home and they call her to warn her, but Asif has already gotten to her first, and he chokes her as he tells her all the Aronoff family must die. He then hears a baby crying, so he knocks her out and goes into the baby's room. He then takes out his gun, but before he could shoot the baby, Joe and Henry enter the home. Asif shoots one time and he hides in the home. Joe then pushes into the room and she manages to shoot and kill Asif, but Asif is also shot back and he hits Lydia on the gut. She is then taken to the hospital immediately and she survives as the bullet didn't hit an organ. Henry returns home after babysitting Lydia's child for hours and finds Abe obsessing over his family tree. Abe then tells him he and Henry actually are related with a very distant common uncle, and the episode ends as both of them celebrate them being a blood family.